and the three spheres above, the throat chakra and the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, they correspond to the planets above the sphere of the sun, which are Mars, Jupiter and Saturn, and which are the masculine planets. Whereas below the heart chakra, we have Mercury, Venus and the moon. And they are the feminine. That's the inferior world. Because everything below the middle kingdom or the mid guard is considered to be um, infernal and to do with health and Sodom and survival and flesh. Whereas the, the kingdom above the heart is the, um, is the heavens. And the heavens are known to be in, in the region of Aries and Taurus, because in this region are all those amazing uh, constellations and stars like the Pleiades and the Hyades and Orion and uh, the star Hamel in, um, in Aries, which is of divine, of divinity. And of course, Alcyone is um, a star that is to be found in the Pleiades. Uh, or the uh, governing star of the um, of our um, particular star system. So, um, in reading in reading uh, the third book of um, the Mathesia, and in this book, Hallelujah. <laughs> Great. Okay, now... <laughs> all right, now I've been looking for about 20 minutes there. I don't know how long I was talking, thinking that I was on. <laughs> so... Yeah, does anyone remember where I left off? Because I can carry on from that point. Right, okay. All right. So, uh, read from Thermicus Maternus, I'm not sure. Was did, did I read from here about Mercury? With just about to. Oh, good. Um, but, I, but I did... I did read from this book, didn't I? No. Okay. I, I showed. I showed. Did I talk about this book and my presentation? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So I was. Yeah. Well, look. Since we've only got. Um, 30 minutes left. Um, perhaps sh should I do some question and answers then and I'll, I'll, I'll read from this next week. Is, is that a good idea? Yeah, good idea. Okay. Fire away and um, yeah, I think it's best to do some question and answers because people were expecting that. So we'll do that. Next week, I propose that I'll perhaps just do an hour of talking and an hour of question and answers. If anybody thinks there's um, uh, like a better way or whatever, let me know. But uh, I'll put something for next week for an hour and um, and then we can just uh, do question and answers. So please fire away and we'll... Um... All right, well, uh, what's chakras? Okay. Well, hmm. And the beard. Uh, chakras have to do with, you know, when, when the Bible talks about the 144,000 being saved, you know, when uh, that that wonderful number, oh, Lord, how I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Well, um, the chakras, the petals 
of these little wheels, you see they are energy wheels, okay? Uh, the bottom chakra has four petals, and then the one above has six, and then 10, 12, 16, and 96. Um, and they uh, are mapped up to the number 140. So, um, and of course, the, the, the crown chakra has 144,000. So what it's telling people in a cryptic fashion is that only the 144,000 will go to heaven, will ascend, because that's the people who have activated their chakras. So um, the lower chakras have a lower frequency because they are red, orange, yellow in colour, and those frequencies are very long frequencies. Whereas the uh, blue and the indigo and violet, these these frequencies are very, very high vibrating. So, I mean, developing those chakras, breathing, meditation, eating, good health, peace, love, the practicing of virtues, etc. All right, I hope I've answered that one nice and quickly. Nibiru, um, I don't know whether. I I could really give much, you know, information in a confident manner about Nibiru. I'm not really well versed in the planet, but Zachariah Sitchin teaches that it comes around every three thirty six hundred years and it causes havoc. It is a retrograde planet with a very, very steep incline. So when it comes into our solar system, it comes in from a very sharp incline from from the southern hemisphere, of course, and um, it reverses the polarity, the poles, the spin of the Earth, and changes the poles. And if that is so... Um, well, he may be accurate, but I know that there's another authority out there that says if there isn't Nibiru and it does that, it won't be around in 2012. It'll be around in about um, something like a 1,000 years. Um, but um, Emmanuel Velikovsky, you know, spoke about um, our unstable solar system, and he had a lot to somewhere living in. He actually taught that um, the first decade of the uh, 21st century would be marked with uh, violent trembling in the earth and volcanoes everywhere and earthquakes. But he said that um, the earth would tremor violently. And um, yeah, I've seen that before. Uh, and uh, that's a question to Sitchin's, um, <laughs> Sitchin's work, really. I, I don't pay um, Sitchin a lot of notice. I have his works, which I haven't read, <laughs> but I've, I know you, you hear a lot about it, and um, I'm inclined to uh, be suspect of his work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for any Sitchin fans out there. But uh, Nibiru, let's, let's see what else we've got. Uh, so it does. In fact, the seven planets are the Elohim, uh, feminine, and by the way, in... Um, Hawaii, in their greetings, they say Eloha, which is Elohim. Now, the M at the end of Elohim is plural, so you've got feminine, masculine, plural gods. That's seven gods of the solar system, our macrocosmic big brother, which is exactly the same as our body with the sun in the middle and the three superior planets, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and the three inferior planets, Venus, Mercury, and the Moon. And yes, they do have their own frequencies. They have their own sound frequencies, which are the sounds of the seven vowels, ranging from A to O. And they are A, A, 
A E I O O U. The Alpha and the Omega. The Alpha is the Moon and Saturn is the Omega. So if you start from the bottom chakra, that's the Alpha. That's the Moon chakra and Saturn is the top one. That is the Alpha and the Omega. Because the Um is the Omega at the top, which is Saturn. So that... <clears throat> They are the seven sounds, the seven vowels, and the Indians uh, round that off to And the Egyptians say, Amun. And the Christians say, Amen. But those are the, the sound frequencies. And uh, in a higher octave, I believe 45 than that, we have the, the octave of light. And... Um, the, the spectrum of light that we see starting from red and then going all the way to indigo. So you see those rainbow colours, they are frequencies in terms of uh, light. Okay? That's how it works. That's what the chakras are. The chakras are little microcosms of the macrocosm, the planets in the solar system. Because we must view our serpent, the feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl. It is a feathered serpent. It is our big brother. And the name of that person, our solar system, is basically Michael. Michael the Archangel or Jesus or the Christ. Um, okay, so that's occult science. That's hermetic. Uh, okay, so I've done that. I hope I've answered that well. Uh, uh, um, is Saturn... And Satan, the Jews worship Satan, is knowing Kabbalah is satanic science. Uh, oh, this is moving around a lot, so I can't really read, read it. Knowing Kabbalah is satanic science and how important it is to know. No, like everything, everything's a double-edged sword. Christianity is the true religion, if you know what Christianity really is. But the Christianity out there, that's an artificial construct. Um, Kabbalah is also a true religion. It, they're all languages, but it's a double-edged sword. There is the, the, the dark side of Kabbalah. There's the dark side of Islam, and there's the light side of Islam. There's the light side of Judaism, and there's the dark side. They all have their virtues and their vices, and they are all just simple, simply just languages. And uh, they should not be there for the division of mankind, but for the unification of mankind, because they are simply just languages. So you see, I don't uh, fight with Japanese people because they speak Japanese. I learn their language. And then I speak Japanese with them. And how beautiful is that? So when a Jew comes to me and taught language, which is Kabbalah, I learn his language, because that's his, that's his language. And, and I'm not afraid of it. And... And um, so, yes, you know, yes, there's some evil, um, there's some pure and beautiful aspects to Judaism. You see, yeah, anyway, I think that's, <laughs> that's enough. I could go on and on, couldn't I, really? But, um, and, okay, I'm still trying to get, get the, the questions. As a guitarist, what do you think of 432 hertz? Well, that's the natural... Um, the natural frequency, and I don't use that frequency in my musical performance because I play with backing tracks which are fixed at 440, unfortunately. And I know that 440 is just a very, very recent phenomenon in the history of mankind, and it's an aberration. And none of the harmonics of 440 uh, with, with any of the, uh, the natural harmonics in our body Whereas 432 do, and and every a, a, a harmonic of everything above and everything below. It's just such a beautiful frequency, and it's very healing. Are the bad guys done? Woohoo! Yeah, I reckon they're done. They're done in the sense that the um, you know, have you ever seen Monty Python's um, uh, the the Holy Grail. 
and you see the Dark Knight, who um, who is John Cleese inside the inside the armor, right? And um, none shall pass, right? So he's the bad guy, you know. He's not going to 